In this video, I'm going to talk about the mystery of Corridus Lumborum, Anatomy and Plug. Corridus Lumborum muscle takes origin from the ilic crest and the iliolumbar ligament and then inserts into the 12th rib and the transverse process of L1, L2, L3 and L4. So it's one of the muscles of the back. So we'll look at uh, the muscles at the region of L2, L3. Uh, we have the paraspinal muscles and these muscles are covered by paraspinal retinacular sheath or PRS as is it called. <clears throat> then we have the uh, psoas muscle, a major muscle anteriorly. Uh, again, it's covered by its own sheath, the psoas sheath. And then we have the corridus lumborum lying between the psoas muscle and the paraspinal muscle along with this epimysium. Then uh, there are uh, certain uh, other muscles uh, which overlie uh, these uh, muscles like you have the latissimus dorsi and the latissimus dorsi aponeurosis uh, which uh, covers the back. And uh, if we go a little bit uh, more deeper, uh, you have the serratus posterior inferior muscle uh, which lies uh, below the uh, latissimus dorsi muscle. And uh, the uh, 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 SPI epineurosis actually lies between the PRS and the lattice mitosis epineurosis so that again forms a fascia with three layers. Then we have the abdominal muscle anteriorly so we have the internal oblique, external oblique, transverse abdominis and the fascias. Now the external oblique fascia and the internal oblique fascia as they go posteriorly they combine together to form the transverse uh, abdominus epineurosis, which pass between the epimysium of the corridus lumborum and the PRS. And again, it forms the three layers, and they get inserted into the uh, transverse process of the lumbar vertebrae. So uh, we got a lot of fascias, and then let's look at uh, what happens with the nerve spinal layers. The spinal nerves. Uh, they pass uh, anterior to the corridus lumbar, not posterior, but anterior to the uh, corridus lumbar. And the red one that is the transverse, transversalis fascia. Uh, so it lies uh, between uh, the transversalis fascia and the epimysium of the corridus lumbar, uh, then pierces the uh, transverse abdominis epineurosis and then it follows the uh, in the uh, transus abdominis plane or tap plane. So if we uh, look at the corridus lumborum block, uh, which was first described, so it came through the external oblique, internal oblique, and then uh, pierced the uh, transus abdominis aponeurosis uh, to block the nerve. Uh, now that's where the controversy lies because this is nothing but the transversalis uh, fascia block which was uh, described by Peter Hubbard and I will show a video of this block and interestingly uh, I have used a PNS and you can stimulate the nerve at this point just under the uh, transversalis uh, epineurosis, transverse abdominis epineurosis and um, you can see the twitching of the abdominal muscles when you uh, see that. So that can be done uh, uh, with ultrasound and with uh, the uh, nerve stimulation. Uh, then I uh, came to the corridus uh, lumborum 2 block uh, where uh, they went anterior uh, to the uh, epineurosis and uh, sort of posterior to the corridus lumborum. Okay, and I say, oh, well, that is very superficial block and it should be easier because you could actually have a kidney lying uh, just anteriorly. Uh, so the chances of uh, damage to the kidney are higher if you're doing corridus lumbar one, one block, but with two, it's more superficial. And uh, supposedly, it is supposed to give us the same kind of uh, analgesia as you get from corridus lumbar one block with an easier block. Yes, it's possible if the local anesthetic is going to spread just as the nerve pierces the uh, 
transverse abdominis aponeurosis um, before it goes into transverse abdominis uh, plane. Uh, so yes, it can it can work if you're in the right uh, plane. And then uh, comes the group from Denmark, uh, which actually described the transmuscular uh, approach to the cordatus lumborum. Uh, these guys actually used a ultrasound, and the approach is similar to uh, uh, the uh, block used for SWAS major block. Uh, so uh, in this block, you have the uh, uh, you know the picture you get similar to the uh, when you do a shamrock technique for uh, the SOAS compartment block or lumbar plexus block. It's just that instead of going to uh, the level of the SOAS major, uh, you're going a little bit more uh, sort of uh, laterally and anteriorly uh, and blocking the nerves uh, just anterior to the cordatus lumborum. So if you did the psoas major, uh, the psoas compartment block, it would actually work exactly like uh, what transmuscular block. So I do not understand what the advantage of this block is uh, when you could actually be blocking uh, the same nerves as you do with the uh, lumbar plexus. But obviously there is a difference actually because uh, this is actually done lot more uh, sort of proximally than the uh, uh, your lumbar plexus block. Uh, and then uh, comes another group who says, uh, no, why do we need to go uh, near the nerves? Just let's inject local anesthetic into the cordatus lumbar and that becomes uh, a intramuscular cordatus lumbar block. And they have also proven that the uh, it works as as any of the other blocks. Oh god, that's that's amazing, isn't it? So this is the uh, uh, approach uh, by the uh, Danish guys, uh, where they are actually uh, put the probe uh, just like you would do for shamrock technique, and you can actually see uh, the uh, your uh, source major muscles, okay, and the uh, cordatus lumbar muscle, and they've done a dye study and seen that the local anesthetic is actually along the uh, your cordatus lumbar block. Like I said, the muscle uh, takes origin from the iliac crest, iliolumbar fascia, and, and inserts into the 12th rib and the transverse process of the L1 to L4. So it is actually lying in this in this plane. Okay. And people have done uh, uh, dye studies, and in this one, uh, in cutovers, and the dye was injected uh, into the uh, sort of uh, transmuscular uh, cordus lumbar block. And all they found was that the the nerves which were stained uh, were the 12th nerve, uh, iliohepigastric ilioinguinal nerve. Uh, the little cutaneous nerve generated from nerve weren't stained at all. And you can see the blue dye actually lying sort of uh, under the under the epimysium of the uh, cordatus lumbar. So no doubt, uh, if you were to actually give this block, it will work wonderfully uh, for the lower abdominal incisions, uh, like your uh, uh, front and incision uh, or cesarean section incision. It works. It works beautifully. It will be a very good block again for uh, your. Uh, hernia surgery. But then uh, it won't give you complete analgesia because the genital femoral nerve is not going to be blocked. There were some more studies and from this is from uh, Adhikari et al. Uh, from uh, Canada and they uh, found no uh, radiographic evidence of spread of the uh, dye to the thoracic peritoneal space. So it doesn't provide any uh, kind of visceral uh, pain relief. Uh, and again, they found that uh, uh, this approach blocks the uh, upper branches of the lumbar plexus and uh, psoas muscle in almost 70% of the uh, specimens. So uh, it is exactly what uh, I was telling before. In uh, another uh, study which was published last year in the region of uh, anesthesia uh, by Carla, out of the cataract studies, okay, and they found that the dye spread in the tap plane, uh, transverse abdominis plane, 
and uh, to the deeper uh, muscles of the back uh, and subcutaneous tissue uh, and when they were doing the transmuscular uh, cordless lumbar block which is a deep block all they found was that it consistently blocked L1 and L3 uh, nerves uh, which again these nerves are found in the psoas uh, compartment as well so uh, they probably would be again a good block for the hernia surgery a lower abdominal surgery uh, but disadvantage of that would be that if l3 is blocked then it can cause a block of the femoral nerve and where you want to spare anything uh, which is supplying the leg and which can cause uh, falls that is not a good thing to happen uh, so looking at uh, the uh, you know, our uh, transversalis facial block uh, where we've used uh, the nerve stimulator as well ultrasound so and uh, this is the flank and the that's the transducer and the needle coming from there uh, sort of uh, anti to posterior okay uh, so uh, this is the uh, external oblique uh, muscle that is a fat and uh, that is the internal oblique transverse abdominus is here and you can see the fascia of the external oblique internal oblique it combines together to form the uh, transversal uh, sorry transverse abdominis uh, aponeurosis and as we pierce this aponeurosis okay, the nerves are just coming in in that plane and as soon as we reach there you can see the twitching of the muscles okay which is supplied uh, by uh, these nerves and as soon as we inject the local anesthetic uh, the twitches disappear okay uh, and you can see the spread of the uh, local anesthetic under the uh, transversalis fascia and because it goes posterior to the carotis lumbar you can see the local anesthetic actually spreading there so if you were actually doing the carotis lumbar uh, two block which will be actually somewhere here the local anesthetic can spread to these nerves and so yes it can work uh, if you're in the right right plane uh, thank you for watching this video and I'm sure uh, I have uh, now uh, clarified what exactly is a cortisolumbar block.